Good morning, class. Welcome to this session of International Business Environment. In our previous session, we had started discussing regarding global trading environment. Uh, that is uh, under Chapter 3. And we had also discussed regarding economic reforms. And in economic reforms, we had discussed liberalization. And in our today's session, we shall discuss regarding privatization. Now, to speak about privatization, in the present day, the speed or the pace of economic change is far more rapid than it had been at any point in the history of the world. Now, with the passage of the time, the economies of the world are getting more and more integrated and also interlinked. That is to tell, no any country in the world can now do or can now survive without the interference of other economy or can it live in isolation to other economies of the world. Now, lesser government involvement is far more desired in the business of the world. Now, since the privatization wave across the world, the famous quote that is, the business of government is not to be in business by John Moore seems to hold very much relevant these days. Now, in order to diversify the economy, the government of India has been working towards privatization. Now, the transfer of ownership, management and control of an enterprise from the public sector to the private sector is called privatization. The main aim of these private sector enterprises is always to earn profit. Now there are, there are two different names of privatization in different countries of the world. That, like in England, privatization is known as denationalization. In Australia, it is known as prioritization. In New Zealand, it is known as ex asset sales program. In Mexico, it is known as disincorporation. And in Sri Lanka, it is known as peopleization. Now, coming to Indian economy, since 91, there had been a marked change in the perception towards the role of public sector in our economy. Some economists argued that the financial crisis of 91 was the result of inefficiency on one hand and also ineffectiveness on the other hand of public sector enterprise. Now, insufficient growth in productivity, poor project performance, lack of continuous technological upgradation, inadequate attention towards research and development, and the low rate of return on capital investment was the serious problems attached to the public sector you know, enterprises that were doing business in Indian economy. Now, as a result, rather than being an asset to the government, public sector enterprise have become a burden. And because of all this reason, the new industrial policy of 91 advocated privatization of the public sector enterprise. 
Now, in order to achieve privatization, the government adopted the route of disinvestment. Now, disinvestment here means the sale of public sector equity to private sector and to public at large. Now, it goes without telling that when the country or when the economy adopted to this privatization, it has its own impact on the economy. Now, there was a great deal of controversy, especially among economists, the political thinkers, and the policy makers on this topic of privatization. The controversy was in terms of whether the economy should privatization or it is not necessary to adopt it. And whether it would be positively affecting the economy or will it have a negative impact. Now, privatization has both supporters as well as opponents. Now, some are of the opinion that privatization is the only way to get rid of inefficiency, incompetency, and loss of the public enterprise. While on the other hand, some are of the opinion that privatization is anti-labor and also anti-welfare that will cause suffering to the people. Now, having said all this, the impact of privatization is both positive and negative. Now, the first one we can take as more efficiency. Speaking about this, now private enterprises are faced with severe competition in the market. Now, therefore, in order to survive or grow, they are compelled and forced to make all kinds of improvements in their organization, the way of doing business, and also the way in which they manage their management. Now, when efforts are all put with the aim of becoming better and better, that in turn leads to increase in efficiency and performance of the private sector enterprise. The next one is less wastages and reduced cost. Now, the private enterprises are based on the basic principle of profit maximization. Unless like the public enterprises, which are being set up by the government with the intention of public welfare. And therefore, in order to make profit, the private sector will make all efforts to reduce cost. Now, the cost can be reduced by minimizing wastages and adopting to the cost-saving technique. The next one is no political interference. Now, in private sector enterprise, there is very less or there is zero political interference as compared to those of public sector enterprise in which political interference is very common and is also a part and parcel of the day-to-day -day business activity. Now, this political interference was the major cause for the poor performance of the public sector enterprise and since there is no political interference for private sector units, they can work freely 
and can take their decisions on time. The next one is flexibility in decision making. Now, timely and quick decisions are very much important for a successful business. Now, in case of public sector enterprise, decision making is undoubtedly very time consuming and also lengthy. Now, as government and various other agencies are involved and the decision making power is centralized also. But in case of private sector enterprise, decisions are taken quickly and in the shortest possible time because their properly delegated authority and common structure and also they have the characteristic of adopting to the changes in the environment as soon as it asks for it. And that is where private sector units can respond to the changing business environment almost immediately. The next one is beneficial to customer. Now, the main objective of private sector is to maximize profit and this sector cannot succeed unless they are able to improve customer satisfaction. Now, therefore, with the view to increase their sales and performance, the management of private sector units would have to undoubtedly ensure customer satisfaction. The next one is responsibility and accountability. Now, in a private sector enterprise, the delegation of and res uh, delegation of responsibility and accountability is properly defined and managed. It tells who has to do what thing in the organization and for doing the thing who would be responsible for which activity. So undoubtedly in this type of organization it is very easy to hold people accountable for their decision and action. If a person does some benefit to the organization, the people would know who is accountable for that, whom they have to praise, and in case of a disadvantage, they will also know who is responsible for those and what necessary steps have to be taken so that such negative activities will not be done in the future. The next one is capacity to raise funds. Now the performance of the private sector enterprise always decides their capacity to raise funds from the capital market and also there is a system of incentives in the working of these enterprises. Therefore, they are always forced to perform well. The next point is no mismatch between the production and the demand. Now, when it comes for a private sector unit, these private sector units produces and sells only those goods which ensures maximum returns. And therefore, these units 
will always try that there is no mismatch between what people demand and what industry produces and this in turn ensures that there is no wastage or short term waste and even if there is any kind of shortage or wastage they would see that it would be in terms of least possible wastage and speaking about the negative impact it could be ignorance of social welfare now speaking about this the main motive of private sector is to earn profit now it goes without selling because their aim is to do business and thereby earn benefit or to increase the assets of the owner now so it is quite possible that the motive of profit may sometimes go against the motive of social welfare now that is to tell the production and price of some goods might have been regulated by government so as to be within the reach of common ben- people and now with the privatization coming into action this might become unaffordable to the poor if at all the price tend to increase than the limit which can be affordable by that section of people the next one is unemployment and poverty now private entrepreneurs use capital intensive techniques in the pursuit of cost reduction and higher profitability now in these capital intensive techniques the number of workers employed will always be smaller as compared to the people who would be working under labor intensive techniques and also the private sector cannot come promise on efficiency for the sake of generating employment so the reduction in employment causes loss of means of living for workers as well as their family members now this will result in spread of poverty now this a uh, function of public sector becoming private sector in other words is called as disinvestment now the way in which the disinvestment would be done there are different forms now usually in india the privatization can be done in form of initial public offering strategic sales sales to foreigners management employees buyout and also by auction so we shall try to understand each one of this the first one is initial public offering now this initial public offering is the most important method used for privatization now under this method the shares of public sector undertaking are sold to retail investors and institutions now the government may in some case sell the shares of public sector units in international market also now the initial public of method is the best method 
in case of countries which have especially strong capital market now under initial public offering what happens is up until now the share capital of the company now every share would have been held by the government and because of that thing the government would be the owner of the company and when government is the owner of the company it would be called as public sector undertaking but in privatization what happens is the shares of the company would be sold to third party or the outsider now this outsiders can be individual investors or they can also be any kind of institution so and this particular work of selling would be done for the first time in primary market and this act of selling the shares of the company for the first time to outsiders is called as initial public offering the next one is strategic sales now under strategic sales what happens is the government sells its shares of the public sector units to a strategic partner and as a result the management will definitely pass over to the buyer the next method of disinvestment can be sales to foreigners now this is nothing but a variant to strategic sales method where the buyer is not a domestic company but instead a foreign company especially in small countries the amount of domestic private capital will often be limited and therefore the government sells its stake to foreign company now sales to foreign company is preferred as the expectation is that the foreign company will bring with it the world class technology and also the expertise to run this public sector unit now speaking about india the government of india has done this in case of maruti udyog where it has sold its stake in the foreign collaborator suzuki company of japan the next one is management employee buyers now in this method the privatization management and employees themselves buy the major stake in the public sector undertaking the next one is auction now auction is one of the methods for disinvesting shares under market sales where the sale proceeds are maximized through bidding now it is less time consuming and involves low transaction cost now it is targeted at the institutional investors rather than individual now in the initial round of disinvestment government divest uh, divested its stake 
in public sector dinesh to this method now when uh, you in the year 93 the government appointed a committee on disinvestment in the public sector enterprise now the committee suggested that the best method for disinvestment is by offering the shares to the general public at fixed price through a general process now since these shares were not traded on stock market it would be difficult to decide the fixed price till a normal trading atmosphere is created now the auction method with wide spread participation may also be adopted now this is all about privatization what do we mean by privatization what is the impact of the privatization of on the economy and the different methods in which privatization is adopted in indian economy now moving forward the next one is the third economic reform is globalization now to speak about this globalization it goes without telling that the world is getting more and more interconnected and in today's world because of this interdependence economic it could be economic environmental social and political issues are no longer limited only to a nation in which it occurs now sometimes it is an opportunity while sometimes it is a new challenge now the introduction of information technology and communication technique along with the liberalization of trade and investment in most countries have accelerated this process of globalization that is to tell for instance uh, if at all a product now the product may be product a is being manufactured in country x with parts imported from many other countries and the product is sold and used across the world the globalization is a complex term as used in international business and has even wider meaning now speaking about this globalization the next topic is the concept of globalization the globalization means the reduction of the difference between one economy and another now so that the trade within and between different countries becomes increasingly similar all over the world and therefore it becomes necessary that we can tell globalization is a process of going to a more interconnected world now globalization is nothing but is bringing the countries and the people of the world together with the emergence of internet facility and also developed transportation the globalization has started its pace 
to be very very fast now the transaction cost of transferring ideas and information have fallen tremendously and have made globalization much more feasible and desirable now this globalization can be defined as the process of convergence or making it smaller as possible and amalgamation of political cultural financial and economic system across the world now that is to tell globalization could be first one in the form of economic globalization now it means increasing interdependence among national regional and also local economies and the economic integration among the world through cross border flow of could be goods services capital and also technology speaking about this in the globalized economy national boundaries and distances have substantially diminished with the removal of market access obstacles or the problems that a business has to face when it enters the market now the dictionary of trade policy terms of world trade organization explains this globalization as the increasing integration of national economic systems to growth in international trade investment and also capital the next one is financial globalization now liberalization has resulted in financial globalization which can also be defined as free movement of finance across national boundaries without facing any kind of restriction now due to liberalization there has been a spurt in cross border capital flows now the next one is cultural globalization now in very simple words cultural globalization uh, refers to the refers to the transformation of ideas transformation of meaning and also the transformation of values across the space involved the globalization has also accelerated the development of what is called as global pop culture now the next one is political globalization now political globalization refers to the convergence of political activities around the world now it can also be in the form of world institutions like wto imf etc moving forward the next one is globalization of business now globalization may affect business throughout the world and though its effect can be different it may be stronger on some business especially large business but weaker on others 
in the initial years of human history people remain confined to their communities villages or local region now there were hardly any formal barrier this is tariffs or non tariff restriction for the movement of the goods now the effect of this bundle of interconnected chain or the globalization of business you know can be said first of all in the form of level of competition now deregulation has allowed flowing of foreign investment in the country resulting in more and more foreign business entering in local market so the competition level has increased the next one is awareness among consumers so due to varieties of available products consumers have become very much selective on the success or i mean on the essentials as quality service and price so they can buy the best product at best price and the success of the business is depends upon how consumers react for the company's product or service the next one is benefits of economies of scale now by selling across many continents business can acquire economies of large scale of production which in turn reduces the cost of production the next one is flexibility in location decision of the most favorable location of business operation or production can be decided independent and this allows them to reap the benefit of low cost labor and other resource changes and the last one can be increasing joint ventures and mergers now different business can be joined together to produce goods and services so that they can have access to bigger market and associated cost advantage which are related because of this interdependence now for this particular session we shall wind up thank you